Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. Today we are testing a plug-in hybrid. It is this Volvo XC90 T8 Recharge and we're going to be doing a city range test and a highway range test and I want to talk to you guys about it. Let's talk about our testing procedures. Now our city range test is only for PHEVs and that's because they typically have less range than a full battery electric vehicle. So we're doing two tests. We have the car topped up to 100%. In actuality, I drove it around today to warm up the battery, warm up the cabin, came back home, and it just completed at 100%. So it has a warm-ish battery, even though it's 50 degrees outside, and we are just completed, so we should get going. Uh, second test will be a 70 mile per hour cruising down the highway. We'll do same parameters, charge it up, cruise at 70, round trip. Uh, I'm very excited to see the difference between city and highway because in the city this car should get significantly more range than cruising on the highway. This Volvo is pretty cool. It's got some cool tech as well. We'll talk about it during the drive. For now though, let's jump in and drive it fully electric around the city until the little two liter gas motor kicks on. Now I want to talk to you about how this car is powered. This one's the T8 all wheel drive. What that means is you have an internal combustion engine, a two liter motor that's supercharged and turbocharged powering the front wheels. You have a little 30 kilowatt electric generator on there that starts the motor up and it also provides assistance for wide open acceleration. And that generator also allows the motor to charge the high voltage battery, should say the gas engine, to charge the high voltage battery when it's running. There's a hold charge and a charge setting. Now come with me on the side. Here we are charging on a Tesla wall connector, of course. We have a little Tesla to J1772 adapter. Uh, this one's from Quick Charge Power, but there's a whole bunch of other ones on Amazon. I use, I think we have three of them. Um, and this is, gets a little weird. So the Volvo has a 14 kilowatt hour battery or so. We're not sure if that's usable or gross capacity. My guess is it's usable. Manufacturers are starting to talk more in usable capacity than gross full installed capacity. Um, now this Volvo, of course, is a European car and it carries through European uh, uh, charging methodology for plugging and unplugging. You see in the US, we have this little switch here on our type one uh, J1772 connectors and this should stop charging. Unfortunately, the car is unlocked. It won't let us click it to pull the charge port out. You need to physically grab the Volvo key, which is beautiful leather wrapped in this inscription trim, click unlock like this and now the charge port will unlock that is so silly that you know even though this car is keyless every time you get to it you got to pull the key out and physically click unlock volvos have been doing this for years they're not the only ones other european PHEVs, some of them tend to do this i can't think of any offhand but i've definitely experienced it just get with the program code the cars for the us guys come on we are now in the Volvo. My girlfriend Alyssa will be joining me. You guys know her. What did, we did a video for Inside EVs together. Something about a drag race. Was it the i3 versus the Bolt? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, Alyssa's back in the video and uh, we're going to get the Volvo set up. So before I kick it all on, I don't want to activate the high voltage system. Let's get it ready. So I have the keys on me. I guess I just need to turn it on. So keys on initial, we're going to go into pure mode there's tons of driving modes audio off air conditioning we do not want on high we're going to run 70 degrees auto no heated steering wheel no heated seats and i'm just going to confirm that the rear climate is off there we go you can also control the rear heated seats and the third row climate all from this screen it's pretty interesting we're not going to delay it's 44 degrees outside like i said so this is right on the borderline of our cold weather tests Let's make sure no one is walking around. Clear, Clear. all good. And we're just going to cruise around our city of Fort Collins, Colorado here until the Volvo's engine kicks on. And so our city range test, I try to keep the car under 40 miles per hour. We're going to select B mode instead of D, which will increase the regen. We're at 100% state of charge, 21 miles projected range. Cruising around the city, how many miles do you think we will have? We have 336.5 on the uh, trip computer right now. Can you write that down actually so we don't forget it? <laughs> It'd be pointless to do this test and not log what we started with. So we're starting with 336.5 on our trip A. Uh, 23. You think 23? I think we did about 25 in the V60 Polestar, which is the wagon. Same drivetrain, a little bit tuned up though for power. Not this has 400 heavy. horsepower, not as heavy and better on aero. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're gonna get less than that. Okay. Well, we'll have to see, so it'll be kind of interesting. 
I've been driving around as much as possible in electric mode this week. Volvo's made a really nice update for 2021 with this car, which is not only the small styling upgrades on the XC90, but now when you lock it in pure mode, you can put your foot all the way to the floor right before the little kick down switch and it will not kick on the internal combustion engine. So you can just drive around with your foot right on the kick down switch. Make sure you know you're getting all of the acceleration from the plug-in, uh, the electric motor. And then that's how you, uh, you know you're maximizing everything here. So let's pull out, we'll go to the right. And we're just gonna cruise up and down these city streets until we're out of juice. Should be interesting. So Alyssa, while we're just cruising around in the city, what do you think of the XC90 T8? You've been in a lot of Volvos now, everything from XC40 to 90 and even some of the wagons and sedans. How do you rate the biggest one with all the new updates? I like it a lot. It's very big. You very, really think so? I, I think so. Compared to like the XC40, which is what I've always kind of been going for, for my dream car. Right. One of the cars we've shortlisted for you this year is the XC40 Recharge, the full electric. Yeah. But that doesn't look like that's going to be happening anymore. And why won't it be happening? Because you've told me that the charge rate is very poor. Right, so based off of preliminary uh, data that we've received from journalists who have driven, I was supposed to drive the XC40, but obviously flight restrictions and actually a ton of snow, I wasn't able to get to the launch event in New Jersey. Volvo is gonna be sending us one here to Denver soon to test, but it doesn't seem like the charging is all that fast and the efficiency isn't that great. Now we can look at the data from Polestar 2, it's basically the same drivetrain, mm -hmm. and it's not looking that stellar compared to kind of what you need. Alyssa has about a 110 mile round trip commute now up to Wyoming, which it can do on one charge, but if yeah. we wanted to road trip it, it's still something we'd have to take the Tesla for. Yeah, but we're not really looking for a road trip car. We already have yep. that, so. I mean, I think it's still on the list for sure. It's ID4, yeah. that, there's a few others. It's, uh, you know, a lot of it's gonna be driven as to what our viewers wanna see in the garage as well. What car is gonna bring the most amount of views, more or less. So, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, XC90 T8, back to this car. Your thoughts? Uh, you think it's too big? I don't think it's too big. Personally, for me, yes, it's too big. But if, really? if mm. you have kids, and dogs uh, well yes dogs it's got a great feature for the dogs where when you open the trunk i don't know if you know this you can hit a button and it lowers the rear suspension so your dog can jump in easier i doubt ellie would still jump in yeah our golden retriever <laughs> won't jump in there but it's a really nice uh you know just lowers the back and it's easier for loading i like that feature a lot actually is that only for the xc90 it is for xc90 with the air suspension which this car has which is an additional upgrade this one's eighty one thousand yeah. dollars uh, i think it gets a five thousand dollar tax credit they do it based off of the battery pack size uh, so you're into this thing for 75 78 grand after you pay taxes and bring it home basically it's an eighty thousand dollar car does it drive like an eighty thousand dollar car though Yes. Absolutely, 100%. This thing's basically a sound system on wheels. The Bowers and Wilkins is truly incredible. Now we have, like I said, a full review over an out of spec reviews. Go and watch that if you wanna learn more. This is primarily us digging into the electric portion. Um, but if you have a situation where you can't necessarily charge at home, a uh, plug-in hybrid still makes some sense there. I still view them as sort of the worst of both worlds rather than the best of both worlds. But there are situations where it makes sense and actually my situation kind of makes sense because we're starting to have to tow cars and motorcycles and snowmobiles around for reviews. We live here in Colorado, the mountains are huge. There's not a ton of charging infrastructure up in the mountains and a plug-in hybrid. here in Fort Collins, honestly. Right, where there's not tons around. Um, in Denver, there's a lot, but mm -hmm. as soon as you get outside of Denver, we're just like a couple towns up. Um, yeah, it's a little tight. So a plug-in hybrid that can tow something like this car is on my list. Uh, I personally am a huge Volvo fan. I think what they've done with the interiors is beautiful. They just drive so nice, so comfortably. And I, I like that they're premium, but they're not pretentious. So no one's gonna be like, oh, he just spent 80 grand on a car. They just, you don't even think about it. It's a Volvo, it's a nice car, you're a sensible person. And I really like that. So um, XC90 T8, if it can tow pretty well, we'll have, we haven't towed with this one yet, but we'll, I don't think this one has the tow hitch on it. Uh, I'd love to try that because that would be an interesting car to have to tow our stuff around. And you can pick them up with a CPO warranty, unlimited mileage for 10 years with Volvo. 
that might make some serious sense. Anyway, we're just cruising around, stop and go traffic, city environment. This is typically how we do our city tests for PHEVs. And I'd be curious, let me know in the comments if you wanna know more about city range of PHEVs and highway range. I think it's a really good buying tool for someone thinking about a plug-in hybrid. Yeah, I think city is pretty important for um, PHEVs. PHEVs, yep. <laughs> uh, just a personal, not really a car enthusiast like me, that's something that I would kind of want to know. Sure. Because I guess I wouldn't really, I mean, I would use it on the highway, but just the way I kind of use it with my i3, just kind of let it run out. <laughs> right, you have an i3 with a range extender. You yeah. just use the electric till it's out and then the range extender kicks on. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be driven much the same. And actually, if you have a destination that you're going to, you can plug it in in the Volvo's navigation system and it will optimize when to kick on the internal combustion engine or when to use electric to get you the most efficiency out of your drive. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. That is, that is. We are now down to 50% and we have driven about uh, 12 and a bit miles, 12, maybe 13 miles now. And so that means we should see somewhere in that 24 to 26 mile on a full charge. We'll just continue cruising around at low speed, exploring. And, uh, you know, if you have to do a low range consumption test, this is the car to do it in. The air suspension option on the 90 series Volvo cars, the long chassis, they're all built on the same chassis, the SPA, the 60 series and the 90 chassis, and uh, they just stretch it, whatever you want. It's actually the same chassis on the Polestar 1. Everyone's got their cool cars out today. It's a nice Sunday here in Colorado, and uh, we're just cruising in the XC90. What a comfortable machine to do this in. And, you know, plug-in hybrids typically are not extremely efficient because you're having to haul around the gas tank. We have about a half a tank of fuel. You're having to haul around that internal combustion engine and all the complexity of the components. And uh, the Volvos, uh, I guess we'll see what we get, but we're averaging somewhere around 350, 400 watt hour per mile, which is a lot better than I would have expected uh, from a plug-in hybrid. Now, a full battery electric would be much more optimized, of course. We've come right back to the road that we live on. We have one mile of projected range remaining. We've been cruising around the city. We've gone 356.5 miles, which is exactly 20 miles more than when we left. We're going right by the house where we started now. So I guess in a sense, this is a loop style. Elevation at least is the same. We didn't take the same route back. We've been zigzagging our way around town. And uh, I imagine we're gonna run out of juice here pretty soon. Now, because we're using the pure setting and we're not driving this car in high hybrid, it lets us discharge the battery all the way down to zero. The hybrid mode, the key up setting in this car doesn't let it eat all the way down into the battery for two reasons. One, if you floor it, it uses obviously the combustion engine and the electric motor as a boost for more power. So in fact, the plug-in hybrid Volvos are the fastest ones. The second reason is because uh, when you use the battery all the way down to zero, you don't want to let the car sit with a dead battery. So hybrid mode doesn't really let you discharge charge it past 20% or so. And Volvo actually recommends uh, charging this car up to 25% um, and leaving it there for long-term storage. Same as most lithium battery packs with a buffer at the bottom, they like to be about 30 to 50%. And I'm sure this plug-in hybrid has a big buffer at the bottom, just in case someone leaves it empty, drives it and never plugs it in. Because I'm sure you can, you can drive this car and never plug it in. Uh, but of course you'd want to optimize it all the way. So we've just hit dash dash to empty on the screen, but we are still running on electricity. I imagine by the time we turn down and come up this hill, we will kick on the combustion engine. Let's find out though. I think it'd be kind of cool to run out right at home if we can stretch it back there. We're about, I don't know, half a mile away or so. Let's make a U-turn and head back. Got the nice fire truck right there. That thing's pretty cool. Great turning radius on the XC90 as well. Really nice and great light steering. You can adjust different weighting here, but I really love the calibration of suspension and driving in pure mode as well. When you have the air suspension like this car does, it lowers the car pretty low to the ground so that you get aero benefit. Uh, around the city though, does it matter? Probably not. So, oh wait, we're making it up this hill, still electric with dash dash to empty. We have no bars left on the battery display. And so I'm just waiting for it to kick on the 
combustion engine any minute here. Uh, there's no way for us to know a true consumption number. We kind of get this graph that's anywhere between 300 and 600 watt hour per mile. We've been in that range and we've been closer to 400 watt hour per mile, I'd say across the entire thing, somewhere around there. Here we are pulling back out onto the road. Man, it's nail biting waiting for this engine to kick on. So 357.5 would be 21 miles, right? Because we had 336 when we left, 0.5, or 330, yeah, 336.5. So we've gone 21 miles exactly right now. We'll update you when the engine turns on. Oh, and it just turned on. We've switched into hybrid mode, 357.6 miles. So that is 21.1 miles on electric range. When we switched into hybrid mode, the car raised up, the combustion engine is on, and the battery is fully depleted. That is very impressive range for a seven-seater, largest in the range Volvo, um, that with cold temperatures, it's 43 out. In the summertime, if it was 70, 80, 90 degrees, I'm sure we could have gotten another mile or two out of the system, maybe even more. But um, nearly a full style loop test because it kicked on right outside of the house. So elevation was negated in this test, which is great. And um, man, that engine is pretty quiet when it kicks on. You can barely hear it. That is impressive. What are your thoughts on the range? Pretty good. Pretty good. Would you think that's enough range to cruise around, do daily errands? No. No, but I see for me, I think it is because I wake up, I run to Starbucks, I come back. Yeah, you And don't... then I go back out someplace and then to dinner and I come back. He doesn't do any errands, so that's the thing. <laughs> like if I were a nanny having this, I would not, no way. So it. the way I look at plug in hybrids is you can go out mm -hmm. and come back, and whenever you're back, you're just plugging it in. And then you start again with a full range. It's not like that 21 miles gets you through the whole day, it gets you to work, you charge at work, you get home. Yeah, I, I, yeah, sure. Anyway, we're going to charge it back up to 100%, jump on the highway, and see how much range we can get at 70 miles per hour cruising. It should be pretty interesting. I'm sure it'll be less than 21.1. <laughs> well, the sun has set, and the car has completed charging. You can see the wall connector is no longer uh, shooting down this little thing, this light. So it's definitely completed charging. Let me get out the key for the Volvo. Click unlock. Look how beautiful these lights are at night, by the way. Check this out. You can hear the air suspension adjusting and then whoosh, shines into life. Going to be a dark one, but we're going to jump right on the highway, finish our 70 mile per hour test, and we're going to do something on the way over there so we can get as much highway driving as possible. I'll show you when we get in the car. All right, here we go. Engine on. And before we use any power, I'm going to swipe to the left here and we are going to put this thing in charge mode. And what that will do is it'll turn on the combustion engine and then it will charge up the high voltage battery. It is already at 100%, so it can't technically charge it anymore, but it'll ensure that we don't lose anything. Now I can put it in the hold state of charge setting as well. However, it will not actively charge up the battery if we happen to use any. So to doubly ensure the engine is on, I'm gonna run it in power mode on the way over there. You can see that kicks on the two liter motor. As soon as we jump on the highway, get locked in at 70, we're gonna lock it in pure mode. Let's jump over to the highway. We're working with lighting issues here at night, but I have the car in charge mode. We're driving over to the highway right now. Interestingly, when you have it in charge mode, right, it's not using any of the electric power. So you actually feel the transmission shift. You know, the plug-in hybrid Volvos do more than just power the car in addition to, uh, you know, the internal combustion engine, but it smooths out in between gear shifts and provides extra boost when you get into it. And of course you can drive it in full electric. We proved that around the city. How many miles will we get on the highway? Well, the temperature is the same. It's about 44 degrees out right now. Same as earlier's test, our test earlier today, I should say. Once we get on the highway, we're gonna put the car in drive. We're gonna lock the speedometer at 70. For a previous test, I've already checked to make sure 70 miles per hour indicated is a true GPS 70. When the battery gets down to about half, we're gonna look for the nearest exit and loop back to our starting point, and hopefully that will help negate any wind. We have about a five mile per hour side wind today. Not the end of the world, not a huge deal. Uh, and I'm also gonna be using Volvo's Pilot Assist, which will do adaptive cruise control and amazing lane centering. Going down the highway, this thing just 
just cruises on its own. It's really amazing. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put the heater, right now we're warming up the car. Our heated seats are on, heated steering wheels on because we're running on the combustion engine. Once we get over to the highway up here, we'll put everything back to about 70, 72 degrees, turn off all the ancillary equipment, the heated seats, the massaging seats, and we're just cruising on battery alone. Let's see how this goes. We are merging up on the highway, so as soon as we get up to highway speeds, we will lock it in pure mode. No reason to accelerate up to 70 miles per hour and burn all that electric juice for this test. We want to see the true highway range. So, merge it up here. What else do we have? We have everything at 72 degrees, uh, temperature related here up on the screen. The car at 70, now on pilot assist. So the car is actively steering for us and keeping a distance to the car in front. We're going to set that to the farthest so we don't have any aero advantage. That car in front is merging. So let's let him get out of the way. And here we are, locked in at 70. And we are now going to go into pure mode, which will turn off the combustion engine. Let's take a look at the gauge cluster as soon as I do that. You can see now we are running on battery alone. And it's using a lot of it to get up this slight hill. It's just pegging the battery at full wide open throttle right now. This is what's going to lead to some really poor electric driving range, I suspect. You can see here we're at 70 miles per hour now, cruising on the battery. Pilot Assist is steering the car for us. It is doing everything. I am, of course, monitoring behind the steering wheel. And we have the beautiful heads up display. You can see that just here with all of our driver information. So let's see how long it goes. We turn this on at 364.1 miles. I will say it's unbelievably quiet in the Volvo here at highway speeds. And of course, very comfortable in pure sitting. Like I said before, it lowers the suspension all the way down for better aero. If we were running in hybrid mode, the car would actually sit up higher and have a little bit more of a cushy ride. So temperatures up to 51 degrees. It is warming up surprisingly. Never had that happen on a range test before. And we're gonna see what kind of range we can get. Because we've been running at such hard acceleration for a long period of time, you can actually see our electric powertrain backing off a little bit and then you see that little water droplet if we go past that line it goes into our combustion engine and what that means is we are losing our available power at our plug-in or at our electric drivetrain and likely due to heat I'm not sure if it's the motor or the battery pack, probably not the battery, but probably the motor or one of the inverters or something gets hot and limits our total output. And this car may not sustain cruising at 70 miles per hour. We will have to see, because right now it's running wide open in electric. We might actually start losing speed here as this backs off. We'll have to see how this goes. Not much longer later, we have a severely uh, limited power output. My foot is to the kick down switch in pure mode. I've disengaged pilot assist just in case it kicks on the internal combustion engine by running wide open for too long. I'm trying to keep our power just below that little tick. You can see if I back off, the notch starts creeping up to the right as things start cooling down, but we also need to maintain 70 miles per hour. So this will be a tricky balance here. Uh, let's see if we can creep it up to speed on this little downhill and see if we can maintain. This is not looking good for the Volvo systems. I will say I did not run into this same problem in the V60 Polestar, but then again, I never cruised down the highway in that car at 70 constant. So interesting test for sure. We also tested the Polestar 1, their plug-in hybrid with CCS charging and a 34 kilowatt hour battery pack, I think. That did a really good range number. That video will be coming out probably early next year. That also did not have any problem maintaining speed in electric mode. So maybe it's the increased uh, aero drag of the XC90, the extra weight, uh, or it's just a uh, smaller system than the other cars. Not really sure, but uh, if you know in the comments below the technical reason as to why this overheats or has trouble outputting power quicker than the other Volvo products we've tested, let us know, please. We have just traveled about 6.8 miles or so, something like this and uh, less than seven miles and we are down to half the battery. My foot is to the kick down switch. We are running at maximum power output. It cannot sustain 70 miles per hour. If something gets hot. We're gonna take this exit. We're gonna make a loop and then we are going to head back in the other direction. Now let's see if the regen also heats things up. You can see now we're charging the battery or if it starts to give us more power. So even while regening to full, it is increasing the amount of usable power. So that leads me to believe it's two things. It could be a battery voltage sag, 
or it could be temperature, I guess, but you would think regen would also heat up the system. So very interesting to see this problem. I have not seen this on other PHEVs, but then again, we are just starting to test the PHEVs in our 70 mile per hour test, just as an addition to our range city range test that we've already been doing. And now you can see our available power is significantly higher than where it was on the highway. So green lights all around, that's perfect. That's what we like to see back onto the highway in the other direction. And we're gonna have to accelerate in EV mode this time. Again, using maximum acceleration for safety. Man, it is so much faster for that initial boost, the driving around town when you're in electric before you get this throttle limitation problem. This car is pretty quick in electric mode, but not here, obviously. Looks like we may not even make it up to 70 on this return trip, we'll see. Sitting in this car, cruising at night, there are worse places you could be. All the ambient lighting is beautiful. That crystal shifter that glows is really nice. And look, guys, we have achieved 70 miles per hour. Let's lock it in pilot assist. There we go. And now we are uh, having a little bit of a downhill, which is nice. We've reached the speed. and Let's see how it does. On the return trip, we can see things are looking much better. There is a slight decrease of elevation. It's nearly flat, but a little bit less. And that has allowed the car to regain maximum power in electric mode by cooling off. It's not using as much juice. And this is also why we run a loop style test. We like to go, uh, we like to find the flattest ground possible because of course, when you pull more power, there's heat loss when you pull a lot of current. But uh, for this uh, test, there are relatively similar elevations between those two exits. This just happens to be a little bit lower on the way back to where we're heading. The car is having to work quite a bit less hard and it's cruising just fine at 70. It also cooled itself down while driving at 70. So I would say on a normal cruise, if you live in a flat area, this car has no problem maintaining highway speeds in electric mode. For example, if you have a highway commute, you could probably do it. But if you have a highway commute up a mountain range, this probably doesn't have enough torque at speed and thermal longevity to handle any steep inclines in electric mode. We are just driving past the exit at which we started this test right here. We are not completely empty, but almost there. And the reason that we were able to make it here was just because again, that, that lower elevation on the way back meant we consumed a little less energy on the return. Not by much, because we are almost at the end of the battery here. You can see the gauge has just a sliver of life left on it. But I will say, even now, with such a limited amount of battery left, it looks like almost full performance is still available from the plug-in hybrid from the electric system. So it seems to be able to provide full power even with a low state of charge, which is quite impressive. Also leads me to believe again that there's quite a bit of buffer at the bottom of the battery pack. We have an indicated dash dash on the battery range remaining here, which means we are almost empty. There is no visual signs of battery indication and boom, the car is just kicked over at 382. We'll give it the 0.1.3 miles. So Alyssa, do the calculations for us if you can. Here we go. 18.2 miles, honestly, way better than I was expecting. How about you, Alyssa? I agree, a lot better. Yeah, really not bad considering the speed differential between the city and the uh, highway. That is pretty impressive highway range considering we only got, what, 21, 22 miles in the city, something like that. Uh, and this was quite a bit higher speeds and less aero. Pretty impressive. Sorry for ending this video at night, but we hope you enjoy our range tests here at Inside EVs. And we will be doing this with every plug-in car that we test, a city and highway for PHEVs and our 70 mile per hour highway, of course, range test for full electric vehicles. Glad we were able to bring this one to you. And uh, yes, not a bad day when you get to drive one of these new Volvo products. They really are unbelievably comfortable and refined and very well built and styled. Big fan over here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.